Rapidly rising DRAM prices have the potential to seriously hurt PC gaming. You've probably already seen the crazy price hikes for DDR5 memory, with many popular kits doubling in price over the course of just a few weeks. But increasing DRAM costs could also harm GPU prices significantly. Just how bad could things get, and should you consider buying a GPU now to avoid potential price increases in the coming weeks? That's what we'll be exploring today. This portion of the video has been sponsored by the AOC U27G4XM, a fantastic 4K HDR mini LED gaming monitor. The 1152 zone backlight provides a high contrast experience with deep blacks and super bright highlights. It looks excellent in HDR games without any burn in concerns. It's fast at 4K 160Hz and even clearer in its dual mode 320Hz configuration, offering a great balance for all types of gaming. And with a 4K resolution combined with decent factory calibration, this display doubles as a productivity monitor, making the U27G4XM a single solution for many use cases. It's affordable for a 4K mini LED LCD, it's great value, we recommend it, so to learn more check out the AOC U27G4XM via the links in the description below. So what on earth is going on with DRAM prices? Well in short, it's AI. Recent deals signed between AI companies and data center builders have put aggressive timelines in place to build gigawatts of data center capacity in just two to three years. AI data centers need tons of DRAM to fulfill the massive memory requirements of AI models, especially on the GPU side. To facilitate these data center buildouts, DRAM supply and future manufacturing capacity has been fully bought and booked out. SK Hynix, for example, a major manufacturer of DRAM modules, said just a few weeks ago that DRAM DRAM, NAND, as well as HBM capacity for next year has been sold out. One of the biggest players here is OpenAI and their Stargate project, which aims to rapidly increase server capacity. The two largest DRAM manufacturers, Samsung and SK Hynix, signed deals last month to supply memory for this project. Part of this deal centered around increasing production with a target of 900,000 DRAM wafer starts per month at an accelerated capacity rollout. Some reports have suggested this would mean Stargate consuming 40% of global DRAM supply, though this isn't entirely accurate. OpenAI's deal is a plan to scale up production and increase capacity, not to start consuming 900,000 wafers per month instantly, but nevertheless, it's a huge infrastructure deal that will demand a significant percentage of memory supply in the coming years. Now you might be wondering how this affects the PC gaming market specifically. Don't servers use different memory modules to traditional DDR5 sticks used in gaming PCs and don't data center GPUs typically use HBM instead of GDDR memory? Yes. But the issue goes back to manufacturing capacity. The fabs building DRAM can choose where to prioritize production with the ability to produce multiple types of memory in the same fabs. Right now, they are shifting their priorities to HBM instead of DDR or GDDR memory, reducing supply for consumer grade memory, which of course leads to price increases and issues fulfilling orders. Any of this sound familiar? Well, it's basically the same thing that happened during the cryptocurrency boom. With limited fab capacity and many products built on the same node, manufacturers with limited capacity prioritize supplying the more profitable crypto market than the gaming market. The exact same thing is happening here with DRAM and AI. On the DDR5 desktop memory side, we're already seeing a significant impact in pricing. Since the middle of September, prices for popular DDR5 kits have more than doubled, and we have not yet reached a plateau in prices, so it's unclear how much more pain is on the way. The prices of all DDR5 kits have increased massively, but in particular, 32GB of DDR5 6000 that we recommend have increased from an average of $125 US for much of this year to over $250 now, according to PC Part Picker. This, of course, also applies to 64GB kits too, which have gone from as low as $200 at the start of 2025 to nearly $500 on average now. Even entry-level DDR5 is affected. 32GB DDR5-4800 kits that used to retail for below $100 have rapidly climbed to nearly $200, so cheaper, slower memory is not exactly a refuge for budget PC builders. With DDR5 DRAM module prices continuing to increase month over month, and supply projected to be significantly constrained at major memory manufacturers throughout 2026, it looks like DDR5 pricing is in a world of hurt and will only get worse. This may not be a situation where you can just wait a month or two and see prices fall the other way or even plateau. Spending at least $200 to $250 on RAM is now the new norm at the absolute minimum. 
Unfortunately for gamers, the pain doesn't end there because GDDR memory used for graphics cards is also being affected. We're not seeing the impacts of this in the market just yet. GPU prices have stabilized at the MSRP in early November, but there is a strong chance GPUs will be affected in the coming months. This is, of course, because GDDR memory shares capacity with other DRAM, and when manufacturers are prioritizing AI products, supply destined for consumer products pays the price. To illustrate how this might affect GPU prices, we've done some research and modeling of various situations. First up, we need to set the baseline for current memory cost in products being sold today. Based on what we've heard from graphics card makers in the industry, as well as information from sources like DRAM Exchange, we know that a typical price for current generation GDDR memory is around $2.50 to $3 per gigabyte. Of course, there are fluctuations across every month and year, but it's a rough idea of what GDDR6 costs. Pricing for GDDR7, used across most models of NVIDIA's GeForce 50 series, is a little less clear given the memory is effectively exclusive to NVIDIA at the moment, but industry sources told us earlier this year that GDDR7 is not significantly more expensive than GDDR6, a little more expensive but not significantly so. What this means is that at a typical baseline price, it costs a company around $40 to $50 US to add 16 gigabytes of GDDR memory to a graphics card. We're probably looking at the low $40 for G6 memory and closer to $50 for G7. Cards with 12 gigabytes of VRAM like the RTX 5070 and ARC B580 save a small amount on memory with their GDDR chips costing around $30 to $40, while 8 gigabyte GPUs use less than $25 of memory. This all sounds relatively affordable. For most models, we're talking about no more than $50 in material costs for the VRAM. But this basic bomb cost is not the cost that's passed on to the consumer. This is because when the GPU makers like Nvidia and AMD sell their GPU die to the AIBs, who then package it onto the PCB to make a graphics card, they sell both the GPU and memory as a package. This ensures the memory is validated to work correctly and allows a company like Nvidia to benefit from a bulk order of the same type of GDDR7 module that can then be used for all models across all AIBs. When NVIDIA and AMD bundle the memory with the GPU, this increases the total cost for these companies to produce this package. And as we know, these companies, in particular NVIDIA, like to apply a fat margin to each sale. So when they sell this GPU memory package to the AIBs, they're applying the margin to both the GPU die and memory, which amounts to a significant portion of the final sale price. This means that a large change in memory bomb cost is passed on to the consumer at a much higher price as companies typically look to preserve the margin on their sale. You can see this in plain view when assessing the price of the 16GB and 8GB variants of the GeForce RTX 5060 Ti or Radeon RX 9060 XT. 8GB of VRAM has a typical estimated bomb cost of around $20 to $25, but the price difference to the consumer to add 8GB of VRAM to an otherwise identical GPU is $50. This is because the GPU vendors sell their product, the GPU and memory package, with at least a 50% margin. At a 50% margin, any bomb cost increased is doubled in the final sale price, in this example making $25 of additional VRAM cost $50 at the end. This is a simplification of what is happening of course, as there are additional margins factored into the final sale price including the slim margin taken by the AIBs and those in the retail chain like distributors and the end retailers. All of these margins end up to create a ripple effect where a relatively small bomb cost change is magnified significantly to the graphics card buyer when that change is passed on in full. Generally speaking, the price of the GPU includes some leeway for typical component price fluctuations. Earlier this year, an AIB partner told us that the price for GPU plus memory packages from a GPU vendor fluctuates over the course of the year, largely due to changes in DRAM price, but that most of these fluctuations are manageable in terms of still reaching the advertised sale price. Sometimes the price change is too much for the AIB to cope with, hence changes in price or supply for certain models, but normally there is leeway. What we are seeing in the DRAM market right now is not a typical price fluctuation, it's a significant increase. GDDR hasn't seen the crazy increases we're seeing in DDR5, at least according to DRAM Exchange, but the spot price for GDDR6 modules is rising. Throughout much of 2025, the going rate has been about $2.50 per gigabyte, but today they are reporting a price of $3.30, a 30% increase in spot price. 
That trend line is not slowing down either, so again, the potential for more pain is on the way. A 30% increase in GDDR pricing isn't too bad. By our estimates, that would take the bomb cost for 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 from around $40 previously to a little over $50. And while we're less clear on GDDR7 pricing, it's probably around $60 for that newer memory type. When factoring in margins, a $10 to $15 increase in VRAM cost would likely end up in a GPU price $25 to $40 higher, assuming neither AMD nor NVIDIA want to reduce their margin to keep prices steady. This is with our modeling using a 50% margin for Radeon products and a 60% margin for GeForce, and factoring in various other margins and costs. 12GB GPUs would be less affected due to a lower VRAM bomb cost, but a 30% increase in the cost of GDDR7 would still lead to an estimated price increase of at least $25 for something like an RTX 5070. For 8GB GPUs, you can halve the impact compared to 16GB. If there was a 50% increase in GDDR pricing compared to normal levels, things do get worse. While the bomb cost for most current generation models with at least 12 gigabytes of VRAM would increase by only $20 to $25, this would likely ripple through with a $50 price increase or more for consumers. Preserving the same margins would mean the RTX 5070 becomes $600, the 5060 Ti reaches nearly $500, and the 9060 XT would also increase to $400 US. 8GB GPUs would creep up above $300 US too, even with a lesser impact. Where things start to get dire is if VRAM prices increase like what we're seeing in the DDR5 market, where sticks are at least double the price. If we model the impact for a doubling of GDDR prices, we'd expect GPU prices to increase by at least $100 for the most part, as the memory bomb cost would go up by $40 to $50 for a decent VRAM size. This is especially brutal for the lower tier models like the RTX 5060 Ti and RX 9060 XT. While AMD is potentially shielded a little better due to the use of GDDR6 instead of GDDR7, a $100 increase in price would make the 9060 XT 30% more expensive. Competitively, it would still be similar to a 5060 Ti at $550, which would see a similar percentage increase in cost, but the raw price increase would cripple the mainstream market. Higher tier cards like the RTX 5080 would be less impacted percentage-wise as a $120 increase due to rising VRAM prices would only make that model 12% more expensive. And of course, it only gets worse from there. A tripling of VRAM prices and now we're facing a situation where GPUs cost $200 to $300 more, again, assuming margins are preserved. There's actually a substantial increase in bomb cost at this point too, so even if AMD and NVIDIA passed on the memory increase directly without applying their usual margin, this would still lead to graphics cards that are $100 more expensive. There's only so much that can be done when the actual component cost goes up by such a large amount. The main reason why we haven't seen this sort of impact in the GPU market just yet is firstly, GPU vendors sign contracts with the memory manufacturers to supply memory over a period of time, usually to align with how many GPU dies they have ordered from TSMC. These contracts can span months of graphics card supply, so models currently in the market could have been produced with memory under normal contract pricing. And of course, there is a lag time between when the components are purchased, to when the products are manufactured, to when they are sold at retail. Secondly, current indicators suggest GDDR pricing hasn't risen quite as crazily as other DRAM pricing yet, so even if cards were being manufactured with current spot pricing, the impact on pricing would be relatively small. The trend line is not good, however, and rumors have begun to emerge suggesting NVIDIA are raising prices to AIBs to account for increasing memory costs, and that products like the RTX 5060 Ti 16GB may face supply issues as a result. We don't know if those rumors are true, but as we've modeled in this video, a large increase in VRAM price puts into jeopardy the value proposition of the mainstream and mid-range 16GB models. A doubling of VRAM price would likely make the 5060 Ti 16GB 30% more expensive. There have also been various rumors lately suggesting the RTX 50 Super Series has been delayed or possibly cancelled entirely. These models were supposedly going to launch early next year. Again, we don't have any information on what is happening with the supermodels, but we can model what that sort of product would look like and how viable it would be under DRAM pricing issues. 
Take the rumoured RTX 5070 Super, which earlier this year was rumoured to increase the VRAM capacity from 12GB to 18GB through the use of 3GB GDDR7 memory modules. Now, in a world where GDDR7 cost about $3 per gigabyte, going from 12 to 18 gigabytes would have increased the memory bomb cost from $36 to about $54. Factoring in NVIDIA's margins, and this likely would have translated into a $50 higher GPU price point, which would have made sense. The 5070 Super could have slotted in at $600 compared to the 5070 at $550, that's what they did with the 40 series, or NVIDIA could have launched it at $550 while discounting or discontinuing the RTX 5070. But with, say, a 30% price hike for GDDR7 memory, now the memory bomb cost for an 18GB RTX 5070 Super is double that of a 12GB RTX 5070 under normal GDDR7 pricing. To maintain a 60% margin, NVIDIA would have to set an MSRP nearly $100 higher and probably sell it for at least $70 more in terms of real-world prices. If memory pricing doubled, now NVIDIA is facing the prospect of selling the 5070 Super for $100 more in real-world prices than the RTX 5070, which may not make that product viable. The RTX 5070 in that situation would be selling for nearly $650, and the 5070 Super with even more memory would be more like $750, a disastrous position, especially if they are trying to market that card knowing full well it will be compared to the 5070's $550 MSRP. You can see why NVIDIA might be hesitant to launch the GeForce 50 Super Series with increased VRAM capacities in a volatile DRAM market. If the cards were rumoured to be performance boosts, we might have still seen them, but with the major selling point apparently going to be more VRAM, it wouldn't surprise me if those plans were put on hold. So what does this all mean if you were thinking of purchasing a graphics card in the near future? Of course, it's always hard to predict the future, so take what we say with the appropriate grain of salt, but I think it's unlikely we see graphics cards getting discounted much more below MSRP in the coming months. There might be the occasional deal here and there in the short term, but we're expecting newly manufactured models to come with higher manufacturing costs due to increases in DRAM pricing. How long it takes for that to be seen in the retail market, we're not sure, but it's not looking good. Based on that, if you're wanting the best deal on a GPU, I'd be thinking of buying one sooner rather than later, especially if the model you're looking at is at a great price. Currently, as we're putting this video together, the vast majority of GPUs are available at or even below the MSRP, putting us in the best position to grab a GPU this year. Will AMD or Nvidia or even Intel sacrifice margin to keep their GPUs at the same price, or at least to limit the damage of rising DRAM costs? That's always possible, but it's historically unlikely for publicly traded companies to do so, given margin is a KPI for shareholders and executives. NVIDIA being in a dominant position has no real reason to sacrifice margin in the gaming market, and while AMD probably should in an attempt to gain market share, they're AMD and they do AMD things. We reached out to the major GPU vendors to ask about DRAM pricing and how that might affect consumer GPUs, and as expected, none were willing to comment at this time. So yeah, anyway, that's it for this sort of look investigation, a sort of breakdown of things that may happen if DRAM pricing continues to be as ludicrous as it has been over the last couple of weeks. We'll certainly be keeping an eye on this one closely and seeing how both things like DDR5 module pricing goes for people buying them for their desktop motherboards. And of course, we'll be checking out graphics cards as well to see how the GDDR memory pricing situation affects those products as well. So as always, if you want to subscribe to Hardware Unboxed, you feel free to do so. You'll get those future videos right there in your inbox and as always we have our patreon page if you want to sign up and support us directly links to that is in the description below so thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one